welcome to all listeners today we are going to discuss about cognitive development of adolescents this topic is part of bs 1 to 1 childhood and growing up block 2 of bed program let i introduce myself elizabeth kurula from school of education all of you know that the different dimensions of development among them how this cognitive development is taking place during adolescent stage first let me see what is the meaning of cognition you know that cognition the term means thinking and cognitive development is the process in which cognition develops how the thinking process is developing among adolescents and when we look at the process of cognitive development we can see that it is the orderly development of mental and intellectual processes what is this mental and intellectual process means the mental and intellectual process consists of logical reasoning the various ways of sensing things then problem solving and so on so this cognitive processes it is happening during adolescent stage in different ways sometimes we can consider concept formation also a part of cognitive development and there are some important aspects of cognitive development let me see what are the various aspects the first aspect is the initial years of life are formative in the development of cognition you know that cognition is taking place during childhood itself and this formative years is very important in training children how to think and since school situation the formal schooling it has to take great effort in increasing the cognitive development of children when we refer to the adolescence stage we can see that how teachers are training the adolescents to think in a different way here sometimes the teachers has to take measure to make adolescents to think about their own thinking that is metacognition so this process also takes place among adolescents second aspect that is cognitive development is an orderly process so we cannot say that it can happen or overlapping one process over the other without attaining some abilities they cannot attain or develop the other abilities that is very important in cognitive development next the third aspect cognitive development is largely internal how do we know that children has attained cognitive development by looking we cannot say that whether they have attained cognitive development it is reflected through their speech and actions you know that even infants how that cognitive development is taking place we can identify from their role playing with the toys how they are playing how they are able to get hold of toys this all design how they have internalized the cognitive development when coming to the adolescent stage when we look at cognitive development we can see that 
they their cognitive development is taking place through different mental functioning and mental relationships and coming to the fourth aspect of cognitive development we can see that the daily experiences in one's social context exert great influence on the process of cognitive development so what is the context of cognitive development that is very important how we can say that this daily experiences take the case of two children one that is doing this marketing selling vegetables or bananas on the street and the other child who is doing the formal schooling let me take the case of mathematical calculations which child shows great expertise in mathematical calculation surely it is will be the child on the street where they their daily experiences calculating counting subtracting multiplying they have a real knowledge about mathematical calculations than children who is attending the formal schooling and the next aspect that is different places of cognitive development among different children different paces we cannot say that all the children attain cognitive development at the same pace and in the same way no it's not correct it is the duty of the teacher to give different assignments to learners according to their pace of cognitive development some learners may attain knowledge at a speed speeder level but in some cases some learners are very poor in understanding the concept so it is there is the need of differentiated assignments given to the learners so these are the important aspects of cognitive development when we look at cognitive development there are two major perspectives one is the perspective put forward by Piaget's theory of cognitive development another one socio cultural perspective of lev as vygotsky in today's discussion we will concentrate upon piaget's theory of cognitive development piaget's theory all of you know that piaget has adopted a different style to interact with children to find out the cognitive development among children what he did is he tried to communicate and interact with children and from this interaction with the children he will always listen to the interaction between children and why children are interacting he never interrupted their conversation instead of that he tried to get questions from them and from their answers he framed the next question so we can say that piaget has adopted a method that is known as clinical probing so through this clinical probing he has developed his theory of cognitive development what is important in his theory of cognitive development is there are three central concept concepts in piaget's theory the first concept that is schemes for organization second concept adaptation and the third equilibration let me see what does each term mean when we look at the schemes we know that the schemes are mental categories of events objects and relations or in other words we can say that they are the psychological structures that organize experience so all learners 
or all children who come to school, their mind is not tabula rasa. There is something in the mind of children. It is the duty of the teacher to draw out what is there in the inner minds of children. So this, from these mental schemes only, the teachers can develop the later knowledge which leads to the understanding of a particular concept. So here the schemes, it represents the psychological structures that organize experience. And the next central concept in Piaget's theory is adaptation. What does adaptation mean? Adaptation means that schemes change constantly adapting to children's experience. And when we look at adaptation, there are two processes that is very important in adaptation. One is assimilation and the other one is accommodation. What is this assimilation means? Assimilation means that when a new knowledge comes into the mind of the learners, they will try to assimilate with it with their previous knowledge. And what is accommodation? Accommodation occurs when schemes are modified based on experience because their existing knowledge cannot internalize that particular knowledge. At the time, they have to modify the schemes in order to accommodate the new knowledge. So we have seen what is schemes, what is adaptation and what are the two processes of adaptation that is assimilation and accommodation. In this way, when they are going through this process, we can see that when new knowledge comes or let me take the case of assimilation, during that process, when they try to assimilate the new knowledge with the existing schemes, there is equilibration. Well, but when the new knowledge is not able to assimilate, with the existing knowledge, they have to change their schemes or modify the schemes, that is accommodation. And during that process, when their brain cannot internalize the new knowledge, some kind of disequilibrium occurs. So there is the necessity to lead to equilibration. Hence, we can define equilibration as a process by which Children reorganize their schemes to return to a state of equilibrium when this equilibrium occurs. So we can see that how the processes of cognitive development is taking place. When we look at the cognitive development of adolescents, we can see that through the process of equilibrium and disequilibrium, the children will attain the stage of the equilibration. And we know that this process is taking place during various stages. Piaget has classified his cognitive development into various stages. They are sensory motor stage, pre-operational stage, concrete operational stage and formal operational stage. In today's discussion, as it is focusing upon adolescents, the stage which is relevant to the cognitive development of adolescents is formal operational stage. Let me go to the formal operational stage and adolescent thinking. This Piaget's cognitive theory when we look at it, it reveals that there is a qualitative development of intelligence. It is not quantitative, it is a qualitative development of intelligence. 
thinking undergoes a qualitative change as children enter adolescence. In middle childhood, children were able to think logically about concrete events but not able to think about abstract concepts. In the period of formal operational thought, children use operations to manipulate and modify thoughts and other mental operations. Why is the term operational is used in the formal operational stage? You know that the term consists of two words that is formal and operational. The formal denotes the beginning of this operational thinking. What is this operational means? The period when adolescent can operate on forms or representations. That is why the term operational is used because the adolescent is operating on representations or forms objects. This allows an individual to think and reason with a wider perspective. This stage marks a movement from an ability to think and reason from concrete visible events to an ability to think hypothetically and entertain what if possibilities about the world. An individual can solve problems through abstract concepts and utilize hypothetical deductive reason. So what is the important thing that is developing in this formal operational stage is hypothetical deductive reason. By the age of about 12 years, children begin to reason logically about hypothetical possibilities. And you might have experience as teachers or as a parent that you couldn't answer all the questions raised by your adolescent child. And this hypothetical deductive reasoning is otherwise termed as scientific thinking. This scientific thinking is very important in science subject because by formulating hypothesis, they test, they test and experiment whether that hypothesis is right or wrong. So the central feature of formal operational reasoning is the ability to separate and distinguish between reality and possibility. And what is the consequence of this thinking hypothetically? We can see that adolescents may become idealistic. We know that their thinking process during the early adolescent stage, it is purely idealistic. Take the case that they say that the teens can think about broad concepts such as democracy rather than concrete concepts such as counting votes in an election. So they are able to think in terms of ideas. And the second consequence of thinking hypothetically is idealism motivate them to engage in activities to realize a larger goal. So they are always going forward of what they think is right or which idea they see is right. They will go forward whatever be the hurdles or bottlenecks they will try to overcome and read and realize the larger goal. And let me see what are the characteristics of formal operational thought. When we look at the characteristics, we can see that the first characteristic is the ability to manipulate more than two categories of variable simultaneously. I will give you one example. Suppose planning a tour by an adolescent, they are able to 
find the relationship between time, distance and speed while planning a tour. So they are able to manipulate more than two categories of variables at the same time. Coming to the second characteristics that is ability to think about the changes that come in future. For example, we can see that they know that their friendship that is happening in school, it is not going to last forever. They may change when they enter into the next stage of studies. This friendship may change. So their friendship circle may enlarge. This type of thinking is there in the minds of the adolescents. Coming to the third characteristics, we can see that the ability to hypothesize logical sequence of events. How they are hypothesizing the logical sequence of events. For example, when we see that, they know that how to foresee based on their interest in subject, they can predict which type of occupation they like or dislike. That is the logical, hypothesizing the logical sequence of events. Coming to the fourth point, that is ability to foresee consequence of actions. They know that if they drop out of school, they will lose a good grade in their studies. Coming to the fifth characteristics of formal operational stage, that is the ability to detect logical consistency or inconsistency in a state, set of statements. For example, we may say that all people are equal before law, but adolescents sometimes may raise that those who are having money have a separate legal representation than those who are living in poverty. So in that way, they will find some logical consistency or inconsistency in the statement that all people are equal before law. Coming to the sixth characteristics of formal operational thought, there we can see the ability to think in relativistic ways about self, others and the world. And you know that the adolescents, they know that in the later adolescent stage, they know that they have to mingle with different people coming from different backgrounds, different cultures, different societies. And they know that the different societies, cultures, they have different norms and it is essential to behave according to the norms of the society. This is an example of ability to think in relativistic ways about self, others and the world. And when they are going through this process of cognitive development, that there occurs some kind of adolescent egocentrism. We know that Piaget has stated about the egocentrism in the pre-operational stage. What is this egocentrism means? Egocentrism means that a child is not able to understand the perspective of others or the point of view of others. They will always say that their point of view is correct. Like that, in adolescent stage also, later adolescent stage, we can see that this adolescent egocentrism and it was put forward by David Elkind. And this adolescent egocentrism can be divided into two, personal fable and imaginary audience. What is this personal fable means? Personal fable means it is a belief held by adolescents that their experiences are unique and different from others. Suppose a an adolescent girl who has experienced breaking of relationship 
with another friend. They felt very sad and they think that no one can understand her state of mind because no one has gone through that state of mind. This is the thing, example of personal fable. And the next adolescent egocentrism is imaginary audience where the adolescents considered themselves as the center of interest of others thoughts and attentions. They will always focus them on stage. That's why we can see that the adolescents are so particular about the hairstyle, the dress that they wear and the way they are speaking to others, their behavioral pattern. So here we can see that this type of adolescent egocentrism is happening during that stage. And we can say that these two are the egocentric focus on self of adolescence. So when we look at the adolescent egocentrism, it is divided into two that is the personal fable and the imaginary audience and these two are the egocentric focus on the self of adolescence. But there is some kind of positive experience that they are getting. Positive side of imaginary audience is that it may lead to increased self-consciousness because they are always putting themselves on stage so they are very particular about their self-consciousness. And when we come to the implications of Piaget's theory, we can see that there are three areas where the implication can be linked with. The first one, the self-concept and identity, that is the egocentrism that already we have discussed. The second one, the moral development and the third one, the social behaviors. Let me discuss about the implications in the moral development of adolescents. You might be thinking how this cognition and moral development is linked. We know that moral development is closely linked with the cognitive development. And Based, inspired by Piaget's theory of stages of cognitive development, Kohlberg has formulated a stage theory of moral development that is related to the levels of cognition proposed by Piaget. So here, the highest level of moral thinking is taking place during this formal operational stage which occurs at the later, early and later adolescent stage and there we can see that how the social behaviors and before going to the social behaviors let me see how Kohlberg's theory of moral development how he proposed when we look at Kohlberg's theory of moral development he proposed a six stages of moral development which is classified into three levels the first level that is the pre-conventional level, second level conventional level and the third post-conventional level. Let me see what are the stages that comes under the pre-conventional level that is stage 1 punishment obedience orientation, stage 2 personal reward orientation. Let me look at this punishment obedience orientation. And here we can see that in the punishment obedience orientation, the right and wrong is influenced by the external circumstances. Take for example, cheating during examination. The children will avoid cheating if they get punishment. So this is the stage one. Coming to the second stage, personal reward orientation. They cheat because they want to get good grade. If they don't get good grade, teachers will fail them. So there is a personal need that imposes them 
to cheat. So that is the second stage, that is the personal reward orientation. And coming to the second level, that is the conventional level, there occurs two stages, stage 3 and stage 4. Stage 3 deals with good boy, nice girl orientation. There what happens is that they want to get the approval of others. If they copy, the teachers will disapprove, the peers may disapprove, the parents may disapprove their actions. So they want to get the good boy and nice girl statement. For that, in order to get the approval of society, they will avoid cheating. Then the stage 2, low and order orientation. There, they are impiped by or they are controlled by the law and order. If you punished, if you cheated, you will be punished. Next, coming to the next level, that is the post-conventional level, there occurs two stages. Stage 5, that deals with social contract orientation and stage 6, that deals with universal ethical principle orientation. What is this stage 5? That is the social contract orientation. There, what is important is that the stage of social utility and individual rights is coming. They took a course because of the social contract that during examination they should not be cheated. There is a rule that those who cheat, they will be caught for unfair pains. That is the social contract orientation. Coming to stage 6, that is the universal ethical principle orientation. That in this stage, we can see that it is following of self-chosen ethical principles. It is their own choice. Whether they want to follow the ethical principles or not, it is not compelled by outside or controlled by others. It is self-chosen ethical principles. This is all about the Kohlberg's theory of moral development, which is framed by influencing Piaget's, Piaget's stages of moral development. And coming to the next thing that is the social behaviors. What is this social behavior mean is that this social behaviors is always linked with the relations with parents you can see. That is the third level, the social behavior. Because mostly we can see that the parents and teachers they will complain that during the adolescent stage, it is very difficult to manage children. Why? Because there may be conflicts between teacher and adolescent, parent-child conflict is frequent. So the relations with parents, when we look at that, they will think that the parents are just professing only. They consider parents as hypocrites as they will profess some ideas, but in actions they will not follow. Why this thing is happening is that because the adolescent, an adolescent is not able to differentiate between the self and the ideal self. So they are unable to distinguish between what is the real self and the ideal self. That's why there always occurs conflicts between parents and adolescents. So this is all about the implications for Piaget's theory for adolescent development. And next when we come that this adolescent stage, we have noticed that this cognitive development, when it comes, they have to interact with others. When they come to interact with others, there occurs another aspect that is social cognition. Cognitive processes play an important role in social behavior and understanding. The study of how the person comes to know, understand and conceptualize the social world and particularly other people is termed as social cognition. So this social cognition is very important as far as the adolescent stage is concerned. And when we look at this social cognition, we can see that 
one important model was developed by Selman. Selman's model of social cognition. Selman was influenced by the stage theory of Piaget and the stage moral development stage theory of Kohlberg and in following this stage theory Selman also proposed a stage theory of social cognition and it is based on role taking. This role taking to understand the stage of role taking Selman has developed a series of social dilemmas related to four social domains. What are these four social domains? They are individual, friendship, peer group and parent child. And how he developed these four stages of role taking is that he has given structured and unstructured question as to these four people coming in the social domains that is individual, friendship, peer group and parent child. So here how while distributing this structured and unstructured questionnaire to individuals they have given some questions related with who are you? How do you define yourself? What is your personality traits? Such type of questions. So all these things are collected qualitatively. And to the friends, he has given some questions related with what is the need of friendship? How did you come into the friendship circle with others? So such type of questions were given. And coming to the peer group, there he has raised some questions as what is the need of group cohesion? How do you form a group? What is your group dynamics? Such type of questions have raised. And coming to the parent-child relationship, he has given some questionnaire to the parents and child that how do you perceive punishment and how do you resolve conflicts between parent and child. What is your perception about obedience of children? And to children they, he has asked how do you perceive the obedience exerted by parents? And based on this type of questions, he has come forward with some of the content and structures. The content is related with the development of one's perspective with that of others and the structures it is developed based on the development of self in relation to interaction with others and the different roles that they want to take. Let me see what are these different role taking perspective that Selman has developed. So we can see here that there are five perspective taking aspects that was put forward by Selman in his model of social cognition. The first one is egocentric undifferentiated stage, second one subjective perspective taking stage third one reciprocal perspective taking, fourth mutual role taking, fifth in-depth and societal perspective taking. Let me come to the first stage that is egocentric undifferentiated stage which occurs 3 to 6 years. What is happening here that is the adolescents they are unable to distinguish a personal perspective from another's point of view. Coming to the second stage we can see that the subjective perspective taking stage which occurs between 6 to 9 years. There is the ability to understand that the self and others may have different perspectives of a social situation. 
Then coming to the reciprocal perspective taking that occurs from 8 to 12 years, there the adolescents are capable of making inference about the perspective of others and come to realize how others may view them and their behavior. Coming to the fourth stage that is mutual role taking perspective, there it occurs between 10 to 15 years. <coughs> Here what is important is that adolescents take a holistic perspective of a situation. Instead of taking it partly, they take a holistic perspective of situation. Then comes the intact and societal perspective taking. It occurs above 15 years that is adolescence and adulthood stages. There the importance is the adolescence comes to understand the shared social system perspective of social situations. So here we can see that how this role taking perspective that leads to the social cognition of adolescence. And based on this, the later adolescent stage, we can see that the adolescents are able to realize the demands put forward by parents by altering various ways. And sometimes there occurs the conflict between the child and parents because they may not be able to realize the total demands of parents. In that case, they, there occurs a conflict between parent and child. And when we think of this formal operational stage as proposed by Piaget, we cannot say that this is the final stage of cognitive development. The later cognitive researchers have stated that can we complete the cognitive development with the formal operational stage? No, there is one more stage that is the post formal operations. What is this post formal operational stage is that knowledge is not absolute. There is not only one right answer and in this stage an individual can consider multiple perspectives. So, for example, when we think of one example in this case post of formal operations that is there are many right ways to define any life experience and whether that is bitter or good experience, how do you describe different experiences that is important. So, here we can see that there are the different role taking perspective and during the social cognition but after this former operational stage the later researchers have come forward with the post formal operations and this post formal operations is very important to think in terms of multiple perspective so that we get a different view regarding one's life. Hope that all of you have understood the stages of cognitive development, how cognitive development took place during this adolescent stage. Thank you.